Uh, welcome on fourth uh, session or talk today from the analysis, testing and automation track. Uh, this is keeping the lights on for Fedora Project Infra and it's by Mark O'Brien. So Mark, it's yours. Uh, yeah, I'll just start my presentation here and then I'll take it away. Okay, so first, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Mark O'Brien. Um, I'm the lead of the Infinite Release Engineering Team, which is part of the Community Platform Engineering Team. Um, I've been working with Fedora for about two years or so now, and uh, this is keeping the lights on for Fedora Project Infra. So first of all, just to give you an idea of the size and scope of the Fedora infrastructure. So we have two main data centers. Um, we have one in Ashburn, Virginia, and one in Raleigh in North Carolina. So between those two, we've uh, 147 servers. Um, we support four different architectures. So we have uh, x86 and Arch64, and we also have um, IBM Power. Uh, also made available to us by Red Hat. We don't uh, host it ourselves. We have S390X. Um, aside from this, we have a couple of machines, um, sponsored machines in iBiblio I in North Carolina University. Um, as well as those data centers, we use the AWS cloud. So that's community account sponsored to us by Amazon. So there we use a number of different things such as EC2, CloudFront, EKS, S3, and other things as, as we see fit. Um, all in all, we host well over 60 applications across all of our infrastructure. Um, some of it we maintain and run, some we just run. Um, so for example, Noggin, we maintain and run. Uh, we just run Nagios, um, someone else maintains it. Uh, some of it's critical path to Fedora, like Bodhi, which would be the upstate system, for those who aren't familiar, and some of it's just part of the ecosystem. So like the election software that they use for Fedora elections, we also run that. Um, so the different types of infrastructure. So we have uh, a number of different types. We use bare metal nodes. So on those, you might have KVM hypervisors. Uh, we have a couple of OpenShift um, container platform installs. Uh, <clears throat> we have two of those in production and two in staging. Um, we have a 3.11 cluster, which will be soon migrating to 4.9. Uh, we also use virtual machines uh, a lot, so mostly there for applications which are either not suitable for containers or haven't been moved to containers yet. So, for example, we have IPA, which is our auth server there, that's not really suitable for containerization, so we use a uh, virtual machine for that. Um, we also have most of our databases on virtual machines. Um, as well as that, we have Koji as our main build server for RPMs, and for that we use both virtual machines and bare metal nodes, uh, depending on the build type. Uh, in AWS, we have a number of things there, so we leverage um, the multi-region aspect of it for proxies, so we can have them all over the world, so we can deliver content to the users quicker, uh, because it's coming from closer, obviously. Um, we use CloudFront CDN for that too, for static web pages like our status page. Um, and for a registry. Um, we provide resources to the Fedora CI team. Uh, they use ZKS clusters. Um, we also provide storage to a few teams in S3, and we provide EC2 instances to open source projects. Uh, one example of that is Librevatar, Libre hard to say. Um, that's an open source avatar service similar to uh, Gravatar. So we provide EC2 instance to them. They run it on it. Um, so as well as that, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have OpenShift. So we use our containerized applications there. We do encourage containerizing applications where necessary, as they're easier to maintain and run. So let's move to Ansible. Ansible is a huge part of how we manage our infrastructure. It's so important to get its own slide. Uh, we are very early adopters of it in Fedora. We've been using it for years. Um, our repo is publicly available at the address you can see there. Uh, so what do we use Ansible for? So we use it for both configuration and deployment. So almost all of our infrastructure is defined in Ansible for deployment and configuration. So this allows us um, to have consistent configuration everywhere so we can redeploy hosts uh, quickly if we need to duplicate them or move them. 
Um, it also allows either potency and deployment, so you can run parts of playbooks again and again without anything changing, ideally. Um, it allows for rapid deployment, as I said. Also allows for templating deployments. So for our OpenShift cluster, there's a template there. So uh, some of the work is taken out for you. You can just fill in the template for what you need with your OpenShift, and then it will deploy the app for you. Um, we also use it for inventory. So because we use it to configure and deploy all of our infrastructure, the inventory contains all the hosts that we have and run. So it's easy to find what we use. Um, we use a central deployment node for our Ansible. So uh, that allows us, gives us two big advantages. One is we can use access control. So we use our back playbook, which is a wrapper around Ansible playbook. So what that does is uses groups from our authentication system to say who's allowed to run what playbook. So for example, you could be in a group called sysadmin uh, DNS, which will allow you to run the DNS playbook to update DNS, but it won't allow you to run another playbook for saying deploying open shift apps. Um, there is one main group called sysadmin main, which has control over, which can run every playbook. Um, it's allowed root on the deployment node. They're the only people allowed root on the deployment node. So they're uh, the, the main group for Fedora. Um, also we use the central deployment node for secret control. So we have a, a private Git repository where we host all our secrets and they get injected to the playbooks at runtime. So, uh, so that's present on the central deployment node. Um, we're also community driven with our Ansible. Anyone can contribute. So you, uh, I have the link at the last slide for your repository. You can fork your repository, create PR. Uh, if your changes are accepted, they'll be reviewed by someone. Um, they'll be brought in and run. It's as simple as that to contribute. Uh, we have lots and lots of contributors, uh, some very regular, some occasional. We take whatever we can get. Um, we also like to get infrastructure integrity. So around the release times of Fedora, so for beta releases and for our full releases, we do an infrastructure freeze. Uh, there's a script within our Ansible code to tell you what's frozen, but essentially we try not to make changes during that time. It's not impossible. We do have a freeze break request process where if you do like to make a change and it's urgent, uh, you just need to get a plus one or thumbs up from two members of the sysadmin main group and we can make that change for you. So next, on to how Red Hat helps Fedora. So uh, Red Hat is the main sponsor of Fedora. And while it is the main sponsor, it doesn't steer or make decisions for Fedora. So we have um, FESCO, which is the Fedora Engineering Steering Council. And uh, we also have Fedora Council. They make the decisions. They're a community elected board. So they are separate from Red Hat. Um, <clears throat> most of the hardware we use is supplied from Red Hat. So nearly all of the machines we use in our data center is supplied from Red Hat. Um, we have on-site IT support from them, so they take care of uh, racket stack tickets, network issues, and things like that, the data center for us. And they also, supply, as I mentioned earlier, they also supply us with some infrastructure like S390 X machines. Um, they also hire dedicated teams to work on floor. So like I myself am a Red Hat employee, there's probably a few more on, uh, watching this presentation and work for Red Hat on Fedora. So that allows for a full-time contribution so we can supplement the community, support the community, um, complement it. So some people can only do it part-time, so it is important to have people doing it full-time. Um, they also foster an open country. So that's community first. As I said, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, we like to get the community uh, on board. Um, we like to help out with the community and we like to get them involved as much as possible. Uh, the more community members there are, the more Fedora benefits, uh, gives more ideas, gives more workflows, gives more everything. Um, we also like to be open by default. So we try and have all our discussions in public. Uh, we like to share as much info about what we're doing and how we do it as possible. Uh, we use IRC or matrix clients. They're bridged uh, for most of our communication um, and also mailing lists. So, uh, what CPE does in Fedora Infra, so CPE is a subset of Fedora Infra. So it's man, we're, we work in the Fedora Infra community, but we're only a small part of it. It's a very large community. Uh, we also have other things we work on, like CentOS Stream, Apple, and a few other things. So as such, we see ourselves as community members. Um, so then communication with us would be the same as any other community member. 
So we like if there's something you wish to talk to a CPE team member about, you could contact them on IRC. You can mail the infrastructure list if you have something to bring up, or you can raise a ticket on any of the trackers, um, which is be the preferred method. And when we'll work through the tickets as they come in. Um, we're always happy to help when available. We're here to support the community. So uh, if you need anything, just reach out to us. So this is kind of an overview of how we do our work in Fedora. Um, just as a caveat, uh, any urgent fires are Fedora released themselves are higher priority in these, but they're kind of outside the scope of the talk. So um, outside of those, I'll just go through what we do. So we have three main types. We have day-to-day -day work, which is kind of small amount of work. Uh, we have mini initiatives, which are medium size and initiatives, which are large size work. So day-to-day -day work. So it's work which takes a relatively short amount of time. It might take a couple of minutes, could take maybe two or three days max. So generally that comes from issues raised on our ticket trackers. So we've a Fedora Infra and Fedora Relenge tracker. And um, these are triaged twice daily, once in the um, morning in EU time and once in the morning US time. Uh, so these are assigned tags. So we do trouble and gain. So trouble is the amount of work it'll take to carry out the issue estimated and gain is uh, how the community will gain from it. So the priority then would be a low trouble high gain ticket would be the first one we do obviously because it's the most benefit for the work and a high trouble low gain ticket would be lowest on the priority list because it takes a lot of work and there's not much gain from it. Um, we also assign different categories to the tags to the issues as well. So for example, if you came in as an AWS expert and you wanted to help out, you could filter for AWS tags, you could start working on those tickets as necessary. Uh, generally, there is a person in each category who you talk to if you had um, an issue for say for AWS, you reach out for me. Uh, if it's for general infrastructure ticket, you'd reach out to Kevin Fenzi or whoever. Um, as well as that, we have some unticketed work we carry out day to day. So these be kind of general tasks, it could be server upgrades, mass reboots, uh, CVE patches, review and PRs, it's kind of things that might come in our regular work that we didn't uh, raise a ticket for. So next up are the medium sized work, mini initiatives. So these will take possibly maybe a couple of weeks or they might take a couple of people to do them. So um, as they take a bit of time, they take a lot lower priority in day-to-day -day tasks. So when we do our daily meetings, um, if a ticket is deemed too big as a day-to-day -day task, we tag it with the main initiative tag. Uh, every month we prioritize these in order and then we work on them down through the priority. Uh, these are second priority to day-to-day -day work and as such, they can take a little longer to do. So an example of one we've done recently is uh, we wanted to centralize all our documents. Say they were on a few different places, some were on PR, some were on readthedocs.io. So we wanted to move them all into uh, docs.fedorprojects.org. So a few people in the team uh, in their spare time or in their downtime during the day, uh, they started moving over bits and pieces. And at this stage, we have most of them over. Um, so then the last is the big chunks of work, the initiatives. So these are usually take a team of a couple of people. It can be anything from three to five people really, um, and they can take multiple ones. So these are generally proposed by the community. It can be proposed by anybody. Um, when a proposal comes in, the product owner of CPE will have a look. Um, they'll see if it benefits the Fedora community, the cause the merit of it, and maybe do some more information gathering if anything isn't clear. Uh, so if the product owner thinks it might be acceptable, they hand it off to the art team. So the art team is a small team, uh, usually kind of two to four people. They work for about two weeks. Uh, it's built up of different members of the CP, CPE team based on skill sets. So for example, I'm normally the sysadmin on it. There might be some expert on Python or if it was for a mailman, for example, someone who knows mailman. So the art team, um, this, first we look at the feasibility of whether this project is possible. Um, maybe some technical paths we could take, some possible solutions, and if it is possible, maybe a POC. Uh, if it's deemed unfeasible, the um, initiative, we go back to the initiative uh, proposer and say, look, this isn't in its current state feasible. So they might ask for it in a slightly different way than it is, or they might just drop it. 
but if it is steam feasible, which most of the time it is, um, <coughs> it'll go onto our backlog to be prioritized by stakeholders. So every quarter, the stakeholders will prioritize what work we should do. And based on that, and the availability of uh, people will assign maybe two to three initiatives a quarter and we carry out the work in them and all going well to deliver them to the community now. Uh, some big examples of this, the biggest one would be our new um, authentication system that was carried out over a number of months uh, by a few different people and it was delivered uh, early last year. So how can you help if you'd like to contribute? So if you do any of these things, uh, Python, Bash, Linux, admin, Ansible, uh, or even any other computer related thing, UX, UI, anything, we can always use your help. Um, a good way to uh, introduce yourself is to make a mail the list of infrastructure at list.floorproject.org and introduce yourself. Um, we have weekly meetings on IRC uh, where we um, go through any news that's in Fedora, uh, we go through some tickets sometimes. There's people who give talks on parts of our infrastructure and information for new people and people who existed and might not know it very well. It's a good way to share knowledge and learn. Um, you can create a Fedora account. So that's kind of necessary for almost everything to get access. Uh, when you have one, you get sponsored to become an FI apprentice. So that's um, one, one of our uh, authentication groups. So what that'll do is give you read-only access to a lot of our servers. So you can kind of SSH in, you can have a look around, see how things work without the risk of breaking anything, see what applications we use, what you can be familiar with, things like that. And as always, the team is there to help. So if you see a ticket anywhere on any of our repos um, listed below there at the bottom of the page, um, and you think you might help out or you think you just want to learn and watch just make a comment on the ticket stick your hand up and someone from the infra team maybe you can just do it yourself but if you can someone from the infra team be happy to help you can chat them you can discuss it with them and they go through it with you uh, anything to get the community on board and get involved um so that's pretty much it for me and um, there's my details if anyone wants to contact me after the talk if they have questions that they can't think of now um IRC or Matrix, you can just hit me as M O'Brien or you can email me uh, mjobrienredhat.com. So if anyone has any questions, I can open it up to the floor there. Right now, I do not see any questions, but I have one. So okay. you said that you have three levels of, of work or projects. Uh, does it happen that your day-to-day -day work is so intensive you do not have time for anything else for a prolonged period of time and how do you handle it if, if that so happens. that's that's a very good question actually because it's something like obviously that can happen occasionally so generally cp is a fairly big team so um infrared rel engine is a sub team of cp so we're the ones to carry out kind of most of the day-to-day -day work and um, and as you see, the initiatives are an assigned team but uh, as we run the quarterly cycle, if in a quarter we find that the day-to-day -day work is too much for us, in the next quarter they'll have take on less initiatives and leave more people on the infrared range team to try and make up the difference. So it's a case of moving bodies to where they need to be so that nobody's swamped. It it doesn't in my experience, it doesn't happen that often. There's okay, there's like certain people who know a lot who probably will obviously will have more work on their plate, but in general there's an usually enough people around to try and get the work done. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah. There is one question. So what about initiatives like RPM Autospec that require a small but constant amount of attention? Issues and PRs on RPM Autospec don't get answers right now. Okay, so RPM Autospec, uh, RPM Autospec was uh, an initiative run recently. So it did get a solid three months of attention um, it got uh, updated. Um, so, as I said, the infernal engine team do the day to day work. So, we'll keep an eye on the issues and PRs that come in to RPM Autospec. It can be a little bit lower on applications like that. But uh, uh, if there's anything urgent, we'll try and get to them straight away. If it's for small incremental builds or minor bugs, it might take a little while. 
But uh, generally, they'll just come out to our radar and we'll try to get to them as soon as we can. Thank you for the answer. Yeah. All right. I think there are no more questions. Yeah, OK. As I said, if anyone thinks of anything after the call, feel free to reach out to me by email or, or on IRC. Um, and all the links, uh, the slides are available there. So any of the links, you should be able to get through the slides. All right. So thank you, Mark, uh, for a pleasant presentation. And thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of Friday and rest of the. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, time for a beer now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you.